everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and I want to welcome all of you to my weekly video update. If you're looking to do a rapid antigen test for COVID-19 at home, you've probably heard of these two names. Binex Now Antigen Self-Test, looks like this, and Illume COVID-19 Home Test. Now these are the two more common tests that you can find in your local pharmacy like CVS or Walgreen. And I have uh, made videos that demonstrate how to actually do these tests. Those videos are available on my YouTube channel. You can look them up. Many people who watch these videos, they reached out to me asking many questions about the accuracy of these tests. And I have a feeling you probably are thinking about the accuracy of these tests also. Because we have all heard that the accuracy of these rapid antigen tests is not as good as the RT-PCR test. But these tests are very commonly available over the counter. They are pretty low cost and the results are available within 15 minutes or so. So it's a balancing act. But we would like to have a test which is very reliable. We can rely on it. It should have good accuracy if not great accuracy like RT-PCR but we should be able to rely on these tests, right? That's the whole point. But many people are confused about this because the numbers that they publish, they put in the package, trust me, they don't exactly mean the accuracy of your individual test. You have to understand that a little bit better and deeper and this is what I would like to do in this video and compare the data for these two tests side by side. Now before I go any further, let me tell you that I have no relationship with these companies and I have looked at only publicly available information that they have submitted to the FDA. So I don't have no other information. And like everybody else, I bought these tests out of my own pocket. So I have no reason to favor one test over the other. So we look at the data together, try to make some sense out of it, what it means for you, for your individual test. And then maybe it'll help you figure it out, right? So we look into it together, but if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below or let me know through LinkedIn. I'll be very happy to discuss this further and share with you what I understand and help you figure this out as well. So we are all in it together. We're gonna work together and try to figure this out, uh, what it all means. Okay, so let's look into this. So here I'm gonna share with you side by side data only on symptomatic patients. Now there's more information available in the data package that they have given to, to the FDA, but I think this is the most direct side-by-side -side comparison we can make between these two tests. Symptomatic means patients have symptoms and typically these tests are done within the first seven days after symptoms appear. So let's look at the Binex now first. There's a data table like this and we'll go into this uh, detail step by step but for now it gives you data comparing the test result from this rapid anti antigen test in the rows positive negative and in the columns it compares that test result with RT-PCR. So we are comparing the antigen test result with the RT-PCR test result. Same table for Illume. So let's look at the data for Binex now. On the positive side, meaning when the RT-PCR result is positive, this test is showing 22 positive results and two negative results out of a total of 24, okay? Illume on the other side is showing 25 out of 26 positives when they are supposed to be positive based on the RT-PCR testing. On the negative side, Binex is showing 28 negatives and zero positives when everything is supposed to be negative based on RT-PCR. So it's like 100% agreement. And for Illum also, similarly, 38 negatives and zero positives. So this translates to what they call positive agreement and negative agreement. And for Binex, it's about 92%, but pay attention to that range. 95% confidence interval, about 73 to 99. And this, this is a broad range. The number could be anywhere in between. And the reason is they have tested only very few samples. On the negative side, it's very good, right? So it's 100% and the range is also pretty good, about 88% to 100%. For Illume, PPA, which is positive agreement, is 96%. And again, they have a range and negative agreement is 100%. So on paper, this looks great, right? However, this is where the problem comes. 
90% positive agreement does not mean there's a 90% chance you are positive for COVID-19 when the test result is positive for you, your individual test. If you get a positive result, it does not relate directly with what they are showing you in the paperwork. And this is very, I know, it is very confusing. Let me explain this to you. Here's a hypothetical scenario. We are not using the data that I showed you in the last slide, but it applies everywhere. So we'll put a two by two grid. In the columns, we will show confirmed COVID-19 and confirmed non-COVID-19 from RT-PCR. In the rows, we will show antigen positive and antigen negative, right? So you have a scenario where you have 92 pros positives and 10 false negatives. That gives you a diagnostic sensitivity, which is also positive agreement of 90%, right? That's what we saw in the last slide. On the negative side, if you have 95 true negatives and five false positives, it is 95%. So here I'm showing you a number called PPV at 5%. Let me explain that to you. PPV stands for positive predictive value. You have to do some more analysis to predict the accuracy or the confidence level in an individual result if you did it for yourself, for example. Based on these numbers, and if the rate of disease like 5%, maybe 5% 5 of the people have COVID infection, that's where it gets a little bit murky. We have to make that assumption. This PPV depends upon the rate of disease prevalence. We are assuming 5%. FDA does the same analysis. That number is only 49%, meaning half of the time, nearly half of the time with this test, if you got a positive result, it may not be positive at all. It could be a false positive. And the range is 29 to 69. Pretty big range. On the negative side, it's much better. So if you got a negative result from something like this, you can be very confident that you don't have COVID. But a lot of people are confused because they're getting these what they call false positive results from using a test like this. And that's the reason why it's happening this way. So now let's look at our two tests, the numbers I showed you. What are the PPV and NPV numbers? Symptomatic patients only. PPV at 5% is 100% because remember, we got no false positives in the data they showed us. And PV at 5% is 99%, 99%, even more than that. So it looks very good. But remember, they tested less than 50, very few samples. Even if one, even if one was a false positive, for Binax, their PPV will crash to 58% and the range will be 16 to 90. And for Illum, it will be about 66%. So both of these tests, their positive predictive value, whether you are really positive or not, is not that good, even if the positive agreement and the negative agreement looks very good. Does it mean you should not do it? No, you should do it, but be aware that if you get a positive result, it may be a false positive and you may have to either repeat the test or do an RT-PCR test on top of it. If you get a negative result, your confidence level should be very, very high. So one thing that I have done is I have looked at the adverse events reported to the FDA. FDA requires these manufacturers to report to them when they hear about false positive results or false negative results or bad results. So I'm going to show you the data for Binax as publicly available data. And again, we should not make too much out of it, but we should be aware that people are reporting false positives and false negatives. Between January 2020 and July 2021 of this year, they had hundreds of false positive results, false negative results, non-reproducible results, all other. So it is not uncommon for people to experience a false positive result. So now you may ask the question, what about Elium? I found only one report of false positives for Elium. Now we cannot compare them side by side because we don't know exactly how many times people did the Elium test. Binax now seems to be a little bit more popular. It has more sales than Elium. So we cannot really compare side by side. But still, this data provides you with some perspective that it is not uncommon for people to experience false positive results with either of these tests. Now, Illum seems a little bit better based on these numbers, but maybe if many, many more people did the test, their numbers might look about the same. 
So this may seem pretty depressing that hey, we have a you know test that is easily can be easily done, costs us money, twenty-five, thirty dollars, and we still cannot be confident about this. Uh, I would say to you that um, getting a quick result has value, especially if you suspect that you have COVID and you need to make a quick decision. You don't want to wait for two to three days for RT-PCR. And same other way too, if you want to reject the idea that you have COVID, a negative COVID, this could work. So speed matters, right? But we should be aware that rapid antigen tests can give us false positive results, even though the numbers on the, on the paper look very, very good. At this point of time, I cannot tell you if Allium is much better than Binax now. We certainly have a lot more reports of false positives, false negatives on Binax now, but that could also be because more people are doing these tests and more people are reporting them. Allium doesn't have as many, but both of these tests and any other rapid antigen test has the same problem. So what should you do? You should definitely use these tests for a quick result, but do not rely only on that result. If you don't have symptoms and if you get a positive, you should definitely repeat the test or go for RT-PCR. If you have symptoms and you get a positive result, the confidence is high, but it could be something else too, right? So in, on those two scenarios, certainly worth repeating the test within one day or two days or doing an RT-PCR test. If you get a negative result right away, even if you have symptoms, it is quite likely that it's a true negative. But if you have symptoms, it would make sense to confirm it with RT-PCR. Certainly talk to your doctor to make sure that you rule that out. So the short story is, these tests are quick and easy, low cost, but it's only a starting point for you to make a decision. Don't rely only on the result of this test to make a decision. And unfortunately, this is a problem right now and is the best solution that we have available. It's good to have a quick result, but be mindful of uh, these problems and these challenges. Both of these tests, in my opinion, I would say my bottom line based on what I have seen, maybe Allium slightly better, but time will tell if uh, its accuracy will stand the way they have publicized. Uh, but to me, overall situation is any rapid antigen test you do, you need to keep this perspective in mind and uh, try to do another test, uh, maybe one or two days later, and that will improve your level of confidence or do a confirmation RT-PCR. Most importantly, continue to talk to your doctor about the specific decision you need to make, You know whether to isolate yourself, quarantine. You might have uh, requirements, especially from the school in terms of uh, what you should do next. So make sure you're paying attention to that. But I want all of us to be aware of the limitations and challenges associated with rapid antigen testing. So again, I hope this is useful to you. Please let me know your comments, share your experience. If you did a test and um, you were confused, how did you address that situation? What did you do? Please share this. Share this video with other people who you think might benefit from it and let me know what's on your mind. I really look forward to hearing from you and I hope all of you continue to stay safe in these very challenging circumstances.